I remember talking about once in a content piece how we disabled multi-core enhancement for a CPU benchmark to make sure things were fair. And one of the higher upvoted comments was about, why did you do that? That's unfair. It makes the CPU better. You hate the company that makes the CPU. Well, the thing is that I explained then, and we're going to do it in more depth now, multi-core enhancement is not a CPU feature. It's a motherboard feature. And a lot of people don't even really seem to understand what it does when they criticize the disablement of that feature. So we're going to go over that today. We're going through the Coffee Lake uh, Turbo Boost tables, just because it's kind of a good time to do that. And we'll be talking about the different features of Asus and Gigabyte, what they do, and when is it considered stock versus when is it kind of just cheating at the benchmark results. Before that, this is brought to you by the EVGA 240 CLC, which is a $120 MSRP closed loop liquid cooler. The EVGA 240 CLC has an RGB illuminated pump plate, uses a thermal probe within the lower pump chamber for liquid temperature monitoring, and allows customization through software. Learn more at the link in the description below. So multi-core enhancement then. First of all, it's called a few different things, but it basically means the same thing on every platform. This is a feature that is either auto or disabled on Asus boards. It's auto enabled or disabled on Gigabyte boards or some variant of that on MSI and ASRock. And the feature more or less just says, lock the CPU in its maximum turbo state at all times on all cores, regardless of whether the application is single, dual, quad, or six threaded. And in the case of the 8700K, to give you an example, the turbo tables for this processor, just to go through them, if you're running six core applications, six cores engaged, that will output a 4.3 gigahertz speed per the Intel spec. So that is that is as stock as stock gets. Now, the word stock gets a little confusing with CPUs and motherboards because the two directly influence one another. As far as the CPU is concerned, as defined by Intel, the specification is 4.3 gigahertz, six core, 4.4 gigahertz for four to five core engagement, 4.5 gigahertz for three core, 4.6 for two core, and 4.7 gigahertz for single core or single threaded engagement with the 8700K. AMD has something similar. They have XFR, extended frequency range, which more or less dictates that with the more thread limited applications, you get maybe an extra one to 200 megahertz out of the clock, which is why with the 1950X, sometimes if you do an all core four gigahertz overclock, performance is actually worse than out of box because out of box with a limited thread utilization application, you end up with 4.1, 4.2 gigahertz, whereas your four gigahertz all core overclock is worse. So that's where these come in. Uh, just to get everyone up to speed, the 8700 i7 CPU, four to six cores, 4.3, three core is 4.4 gigahertz, two is 4.5, single is 4.6 gigahertz. The 8600K, five to six core turbo is 4.1 gigahertz speed, two to four core turbo, 4.2, single core, 4.3, and then down the line, the 8400, just because we also have that one, that's five to six at 3.8, two to four at 3.9, and single at four gigahertz. Uh, the i3 CPUs just have one speed. There's no turbo. So that's the turbo table as distributed by Intel to its motherboard vendors. The motherboard vendors can then take that information and change it. It is up to the vendors to decide whether their motherboards auto multi-core enhancement defaults with auto meaning on or off. And what it does is again, it locks the CPU to its maximum turbo speed regardless of the Intel specification. This isn't breaking any rules with Intel as we understand it. It's just that they can do it if they want to. And so then of course, from a benchmarking standpoint, you disable that because it's not a stock out of box CPU behavior. You are no longer benchmarking the 8700K as the stock 8700K. You can't call it in your chart, for example, 8700K stock if it's got multi-core enhancement on it because when you start running games that are let's say six threaded applications or something, six core applications, rather than running 4.3 gigahertz like it should, it might run 4.7. So at what point does that become disingenuous? At what point does it seem like 
it's sort of cheating at the results. And from a motherboard standpoint, if as a vendor you realize you can push an extra 300 megahertz with this multi-core enhancement, then it makes your board look better, maybe 10% in some cases, than the competitors because they might default to the Intel spec. So that can get confusing. Wanted to point that out to explain a few things. One, if you see a disparity in some results for CPU benchmarks, where, for example, we talked about our board hitting 4.4 in a lot of applications with the Gigabyte Ultra Gaming Z370, that's because that board follows the Intel spec. I spoke with Gigabyte about this, and they're pretty hardcore about being in line with the Intel spec and not playing any trickery with the multi-core enhancement or whatever it's called, uh, unless the user enables it. So uh, one thing that Asus does is Asus also defaults this option to, I guess, technically auto. And if you enable XMP, it will ask, it'll prompt and say, do you want to enable multi-core enhancement? And if you're not paying attention or you just think, hey, that sounds pretty good and hit yes, it'll do that 4.7 gigahertz all core. So uh, that can, well, that does influence performance results, which we'll go through in a moment. So the two discussion pieces here are how is performance influenced in terms of a simple Cinebench score, power consumption, and thermals? And then is it better to default to on or off from a user perspective? And from a benchmarking perspective, I'm just gonna tell you now, off is better. You, you benchmark stock, stock is stock. It does not change. There's no stock modified division of CPU benchmarking. Either you call it stock or it's overclocked. So uh, that's kind of how I look at it. But let's get into these. So Cinebench, first off, gives us a pretty quick look at this. We're going to be focusing on the combined average results for enhanced multi-core on versus off with two different motherboards. The difference from all core turbo enhancements is immediately visible in Cinebench. Disabled with the clocks locked to the 4.3 gigahertz all core Intel specification, our multi-pass average sits at 1448 CB marks. Enabling multi-core enhancement options boosts that to about 1578 marks for an 8.9% performance uplift as a result of the 4.7 gigahertz all core turbo. That gain isn't free though. There are a couple of things attached to it. One, for the next set of tests with thermals and power, we actually wanted to use Blender for something real world. The problem is with the Asus Z370 board using the auto multi-core enhancement setting, we actually were crashing in Blender. So it would hit 4.7 gigahertz all core per the Asus setting, but uh, something was off in either voltage or just something wasn't quite configured properly when you let the motherboard do its thing. And that meant Blender crashed. Prime didn't, but Blender did. And Blender kind of has that effect lately. We noticed that it's it's a bit more voltage intensive or may, perhaps a better word, sensitive, voltage sensitive than Prime. Prime is intensive, but it's not quite as sensitive as some of our Blender tests. So that means that enabling this straight away, you're in a situation where as a user, if you enable XMP and then say, yes, I would like this multi-core enhancement thing, some applications might crash. It's less stable, which is kind of why it's better to ship with it defaulted to off, which both Asus and Gigabyte do, though as a user, it's pretty easy to, to just hit yes to all the boxes that pop up, so be careful of that. Now, I said the gain is not free in terms of that nine-ish percent performance uplift by enabling multi-core enhancement. Less than stability, the non-free aspect is the power consumption and thermals. So we're measuring at the EPS 12 volt rails here, this is not wall power and is representative almost exclusively of the CPU power consumption. With the complete stock Intel specified configuration, power consumption measures at about 102 watts during Cinebench testing with the ASUS board. Enabling the 4.7 gigahertz forced all core turbo pushes us to 145 watts, a substantial 42% increase in power consumption for about a 9% increase in Cinebench score. This thermal test we're about to show uses Prime 95 28.5 with LFFTs to quickly burn in the CPU. Blender was again crashing, so we couldn't use that as we wanted to. And another note here, this is after we've delitted and applied liquid metal to the CPU. And just to address the question, yes, all the gaming and production tests were done 
in the stock configuration before delitting, but now that we're into thermals, obviously we're delitted at this point. This over time plot shows the temperature behavior as power cycles ramp up and down. Enabled multi-core enhancement was placing us at around 57 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Celsius with enhancement disabled, meaning the 4.7 versus 4.3 gigahertz difference was seven degrees Celsius, but it's not because of the frequency alone. This also brings in a voltage change because clearly thermal behavior is influenced heavily by voltage tables assigned to each enhancement or configuration. And ultimately it is volts times amps gives you power. So with the Asus Maximus board, auto voltage ID plots high in prime 95 when using multi-core enhancement, measuring at 1.42 to 1.426 voltage ID again on the Maximus with enhancement enabled. Reverting to Intel's stock out of box spec, but still with XMP, puts us at 1.26 voltage ID, averaged across all cores. That's for the 300 megahertz lower clocks, 300 to 400 anyway. It's probably, it's about 4.3 versus 4.7 gigahertz. And that's where our power and thermal difference primarily comes from. So hopefully that explains the turbo behavior with Coffee Lake. I'm bringing this up again because clearly a 9% difference in Cinebench is pretty big. You can definitely see that. And uh, for anyone who buys the CPU and feels like their performance doesn't match something they've seen online, I would suggest checking that option first. The next question though is, with this option there, does it make more sense to enable it by default or to disable it by default where disabled might mean auto? And what we generally see motherboard vendors do now is default to an auto state, which is off. And then if you enable things like maybe change a multiplier, that tends to basically just enable it. It overrides everything once you start playing with multipliers. If you enable XMP on some boards, it'll ask to enable it. And uh, what motherboard vendors want to know from you after speaking with some of them today is, do you want this type of feature on or off by default? I have my own opinions on it. I will share them, but just pause here and leave your comment below answering the question of, uh, enhanced multi-core as a feature, boosting your clocks to all core turbo being maxed out, given the data we've just given you, should that be on or off by default by the motherboard vendor? So my opinion of it is it should be off because this is a feature that in Blender with the Asus board is clearly unstable. We're crashing, can't even really get the, the render going. And yes, it's faster. It consumes more power, but uh, it's also crashing. So it's not really a stable product. And if it's on by default, a lot of the people who buy these types of boards aren't gonna go digging through BIOS and finding options named things like auto multi-core enhancement, because why on earth would you disable that if it were on by default? It just, it isn't something that a non-savvy user might think of. And when I say non-savvy, I mean, this is still someone who probably built their own system but it's it's really easy to lose sight of just how many people go into BIOS, and it's not that many. You get people who maybe enable XMP, and that's about the extent of it. And that's perfectly fine and perfectly normal, and I was there too. But because that audience is so big, I would say you appeal to the stability of the Intel specification and run it stock. The next point to make from a review standpoint, although motherboard vendors don't make motherboards for reviewers specifically, from a review standpoint, you really want to test the CPU as it's made by Intel or AMD. You don't want to test the CPU as it performs with the motherboard. That's a motherboard review, not a CPU review. So it starts really screwing with results and makes it hard to compare numbers between your own tests, if you change motherboards, or versus other reviewers. And that leads to confusion in the market, either with readers, with reviewers, just in general confusion. So my vote goes to off, but they were curious about your thoughts and so leave them below. Uh, that said, ultimately just a really quick thing, you know, it's 90% it's better performance with it on in Cinebench for like 40% more power and uh, some instability. So just, if you're wondering how Turbo works with Intel now, that was the answer in the very beginning where six cores different from four to five, different from three, two, and one. They all have different speeds. AMD is doing kind of the same thing, but less extreme. They're just doing XFR and Turbo, which makes it a bit easier to understand. Intel's doing it all the way down from, I mean, just every single 
core account basically has a different turbo. And that means they can min-max their performance more. It also means it's a little bit more confusing. So hopefully everyone can keep that in mind. When you look at your CPU's performance and you're like, why is this running at lower than spec speed? It's because the spec is probably different based on what application you're using. So that's all for this one. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.